Hey everyone, I'm Hoki Hoshi, and today I'm going to go over what telemetry is, how to add it to your controller bindings, and what all the values mean. Let's start by explaining what telemetry is. This is a set of windows you can open while driving either in the open world or in a race that gives you live information about what your car is doing. Things like how much boost the car is making, how hot the tires are, or how much of your tires grip you're using. The info in these windows is not just helpful for car tuning, it's crucial for understanding what adjustments you need to make and whether or not the adjustments you are making are working. So let's figure out how to open telemetry while you're driving. By default, if you're playing on PC, telemetry will be bound to the T key on your keyboard, and this is fine in some cases, but if you're playing on an Xbox or if you're like me and use an Xbox controller with PC and want to open the window easier, you'll need to add a binding on your controller. You can do this by opening the start menu while driving, then settings, control settings, then hit start to open advanced controls, and here you can switch between AMNA, telemetry, or text-to-speech. By switching this to telemetry, you're replacing whatever key you have AMNA bound to, uh, usually the down on the D-pad, to now open and close the telemetry window. Once open, you can use left and right on the D-pad to switch between the different windows. Now that we know how to pull up telemetry, Let's get to the fun part. What does all this stuff mean? So we start off with the general tab. In the top left, we have power and torque, and these of course show how much power or torque you're making at any given time. This is essentially a live way to look at a dyno graph. When I'm at 4000 RPM, I can see I'm making X power and X torque, and that will correspond with the same value on the dyno graph. This can help a lot with tuning your gears, as you'll notice that the horsepower in most cars starts to taper off before hitting the rev limiter, and you want to be staying in the optimal rev range that gives you the most power for the most amount of time. Right below that, we see a boost gauge. Now, of course, if your car is naturally aspirated, this will read zero, but on both turbo and supercharged cars, this will read vacuum and boost pressures. Right below that, we can see a digital tack that shows our RPMs, and to the right of that, an e-brake indicator. Now most people will just have their handbrake bound to a button, so this will only ever really read 0 or 100%, but it is possible to bind the handbrake to a trigger or joystick to get progressive control, and sim setups with a handbrake will of course be able to progressively control this as well. And it's pretty much the same story with the clutch right next to your gear indicator. Most people will only ever see this go quickly from 0 to 100, but if you've got an actual clutch pedal or have it remapped on your controller, you can see this moving progressively. Watching your clutch percentage with a progressive clutch binding can sometimes really help to get faster launch times. Moving over to the right, the steering indicator shows how much your tires are turning, not how much steering input you're giving on the controller. So you'll be able to see the dial moving all the way from left to right when at low speeds, but at highway speeds, it'll be using much less of the full radius. This can actually be a nice tool to help figure out things like drifting counter steer issues and to tune suspension for track builds. We then have your throttle and braking input percentages. These should be pretty self-explanatory, but they show essentially how much you're pushing the gas or the brake pedal. Fine-tuning your throttle percentages when exiting corners can help a ton with grip, especially on rear-wheel drive cars. Play with controller dead zones here until you're able to smoothly transition between roughly half, 75%, and full throttle. All too often do I see people going all or nothing with the gas pedal. And if you play with ABS off, it can be helpful to play with dead zones for your braking too. And the final readout for this page is a speedometer. And uh, it tells you how fast you're going. So that's it for the general tab. Things get a little more focused going forward here, so let's tap over to friction. Each corner here represents its corresponding tire. The green circle shows the available grip for the tire, so when cornering right, you'll see the circles get bigger on the left as more weight is being transferred to those outside tires, meaning they can handle more grip. Then you'll see a blue and orange line, which point in the direction of the friction between the road and the tire. When the orange line goes outside of the green circle, your wheels will start to spin. This is also shown by the peak percentage. You'll hit 100% when the orange line touches the green circle. Now you'll sometimes notice slight differences in the directions of the blue and orange lines. This is because the orange line indicates the direction of application to the rim itself, and the blue line indicates the direction of force applied to the tire. So deviation in the direction of these two lines 
represents a twisting of the tire on the rim. You usually want your outside tires to never exceed roughly 110% of peak grip during cornering. If you regularly see numbers above that, it means you need to increase grip because you're understeering or plowing, and you probably could be turning sharper by adjusting your tune. Let's move on to suspension. This green is a little easier to read and shows us how much each spring is compressed on each wheel. This is a great tool for tuning suspension, especially in rally builds, as a full bar here means that the suspension has bottomed out and you never want to see that. The offset indicator next to the compression graph is supposed to show you how far your shock has either compressed or extended past its neutral load point. However, I'm fairly certain it's broken. It always reads a fully extended spring as 0 inches and a fully compressed spring as 40, and I can tell you with confidence that this car, or really any car for that matter, does not have over 3 feet of suspension travel. So there is a chance that the meaning of this value has changed, and it now means something different, but for now, I don't see much value in this number. If you do have info on this, however, please let me know in the comments. Now here we see the body acceleration screen. This simply shows the g-force acting on your car as a whole. This is actually a great tool for learning how to corner smoothly, as a smooth corner will start with the line going up, then out, then down, while a bad corner will usually see the line swaying in towards the center at some point during the turn. Moving on to the tire screen, this is probably one of the most valuable windows for tuning, as it gives us live info about tire pressure for each tire, average temperature, as well as live camber. It also tells us the speed that each tire is going, which can help with tuning differentials. You can also see a tire wear indicator here, but unless you play with damage on, this will always remain at 0%. This screen should always be used when tuning camber and tire pressures. If you want help on how to do that, check out my basics tuning guide. The heat window shows us more detailed information about the temperature of our tires by giving us individual temperature for the inside, middle, and outside of each tire. This window should be used in combination with the previous window to tune camber and tire pressure. We can also see that the wheel icons change color. Blue means the tire is too cold, and yellow to red means the tire is too hot. Peak grip is achieved just under the temperature where the tires start to turn yellow. And finally, we can see the damage screen. If you don't play with damage on, this screen is useless to you. However, if you do play with full damage, this screen will of course show you to what degree each component of your vehicle has been damaged. And that's everything. I really hope this video helped you guys. This is one of those topics that never really gets discussed too much, and I wanted to bring this more front and center and try to somewhat demystify the telemetry tool. Playground and Turn 10 have, in my opinion, kind of dropped the ball on this info as of late by not mentioning it anywhere or providing any guides on it. While making this video, I was poring over old Forza manuals to check some of my info, and Motorsport 1 was the only one that actually acknowledged and explained what anything meant, but the screens and data have changed a lot over the past 10 or so games, so although I'd love the devs themselves to come out with a guide on telemetry, as I'm sure they would have more insight than I would, I figure I'll take care of things for now. Well, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.